Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Color X Malice, Okazuki's route. Let's go. The glory he received after his death was empty. After all, he didn't protect anyone special. He just died protecting me. He died full of regret. I didn't want to go out the same way. <laughs> From the beginning, I've never felt guilty. I owe him my life, so I've never thought of killing myself. I just hate myself for being unable to protect anyone, and I can't forgive myself for being saved. I've probably always been scared. Okazuki. I was assigned to keep an eye on Yanagi's team. It was around November this year. I was transferred from training recruits to staking out possible X-Day agents. Honestly, I couldn't get into it. After all, they weren't people to be protected. It had nothing to do with the mission of the SP. I wanted to protect, so why was I doing this? If only they'd just get more deeply involved and become high-value targets, I thought. I probably wish the criminals would attack them. And then you appeared. You were a high-value target, collared by Adonis. You were key to both the police and the nation. I'd planned to eliminate you if you were on Adonis's side, but once you turned out to be an innocent victim... I was honestly overjoyed. You never run, even though you were thrust into a brutal situation. You stare down evil and push for your goals. You're someone whose life has value. Someone I want to protect with my life. After I finished listening to Okazuki's story, I felt more composed than I had been earlier. His past, everything he'd been through, the reason he yearned for death, and his twisted heart. Now that I knew all of this, I understood why he tried to protect me via his own death. But I... Now it's your turn. What's your problem with me? <laughs> From the beginning, I've told you that my goal is to protect someone special. You accepted that. I thought you, that you rejected me because you didn't want to hurt me, but that isn't it. Why won't you let me protect you? I did accept it at first. Even if it wasn't for my sake, it made me feel happy to be protected. I felt safe when I was with you. I know the SP risk their lives for other people. Still, I don't want you to die for my sake. That's all there is to it. If you care about me at all, then I want us to live together. Uh. I haven't been thinking about anything so noble as not wanting anyone to be hurt. In fact, it's the opposite. The opposite? If someone's hurt, I don't want it to be you. But if it isn't you, then that would be okay. If someone else lost their life protecting me, but it helped me solve the case, then I think I could accept that. I'd feel frustrated and miserable, and I'm sure I'd regret it. But I think it would be better than seeing you die. I think I'm the worst kind of person, too. But that's why I don't want you to protect me. In other words, you're saying, You're the most precious person in the world to me. I probably projected my own standards onto him, but I couldn't say anything bad about Okazuki. Just as you recognized my worth and decided that I was worth protecting, I really like you, so I don't want you protecting me with your life. Again, we went silent for a while. It didn't really feel like it was going anywhere. Our respective positions meant the world to us. I couldn't see a way out of this dilemma. I'm not sure if I should be happy. Okazuki whispered. You don't want to let me die because you treasure me. I'm really happy to hear that. But if you won't accept me, then... I'll just have to find someone else who will. <laughs> Even if it's not for you, I'm still going to die for someone. Oh, I just wait. To, I hate his thinking of this. I really do. That's, that's why, I will be honest, Okazuki's Route is not one of my favorites. If you don't know, I play these games before I play them on here because, like, the one I didn't play beforehand, uh, London Detective Mysteria, I think it's called, I was having issues reading. I think it's because the English language or something. So that's why I kind of postponed that one. 
So I'll probably play that off camera and then replay it. Because I think it also depends on if I'm interested in the game too. So anyway, as I was saying, I was never a fan of Okazaki's route. Uh, I will say I feel like they could have just cut his out or... I don't know. There's something about his route that just feels like it's unimportant to me. Yeah, it has some issues with X Day, but some other people may think they love his route and they may think I'm crazy. But my husband even agreed that he's not a fan of Okuski's route. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> I hadn't gotten through to him at all. Why? Why? Why are you in such a hurry to die? Are you stupid? Stupid. Don't you have even the slightest desire to live? Was all of our time together, all of the time you spent with Yoshinari and Yanagi's team, was it all just you passing time until your death? No, all of it is precious to me. But that's why... Then don't try to die. Uh, you know, when you die, that's it. Nothing more. You can't talk while looking into someone's eyes like this. You can't hold hands or laugh or cry. Everything is gone. You have nothing. I... I want to spend more of my life with you. Lady. His face clouded over. It's not as if I wanted to make him feel that way. I just wanted us to laugh together. Why? Why won't he understand? Looking down, I saw a DVD case with a familiar title. I murmured as I examined it. Do you like these movies? You have the whole series on DVD. Huh? There's a new part to this coming out next year. Well, if you die, you'll never see it. You're right. I looked around. Even though Okazaki's apartment wasn't well lived in, it was clearly his home. If you died back in Shinjuku Garden, I never would have been able to come here. He looked down, as if perplexed. He seemed like a mixture of sorrow and resentment. Right. Let's have some of the cake that Yoshinari gave us. Uh? Irritated, I opened the cake box and briskly plated two slices. Then I stuck a fork in the cake and presented it towards Okazuki's mouth. You liked my cooking before, and it's not like you hate sweets, right? Yeah, this is so sudden. <clears throat> I thrust the cake into his mouth without letting him finish his sentence. Delicious? It is, but... If you die, you won't be able to eat this either. So, let's try everything while you're still here. I felt like the fork wasn't enough, so I thought about shoving the food into his face by hand. I knew I was losing my temper, but I couldn't contain the anger any longer. Hey, calm down. You're kind of scary. Okazaki, you said that you wanted to find a way for us to be together. I thought about it too, and this is the only way I can see. I have to make you want to live. Uh. If you live, you can enjoy so many things. I want you to believe that. I doubted this would work on someone who had spent years pining for death, but I still refused to give up. Dying while protecting someone is just cowardly. You're not fulfilling any duty. Uh -huh. Isn't it your job to both protect someone while surviving any challenge? If you live, you can protect many people. Neglect that, and you're a failure as both SP and police officer. Yeah. In the end, I've just been thinking about myself. I know that I have no right to be in the SP. I preach about the importance of the police, but I can't do anything for the organization. In anger, my body suddenly moved. Oh, <gasps> You go, girl. <laughs> Ow! You said... You said that you loved me. I realized that I slapped Okazaki. My hand hurt, but my heart hurt worse. He could have easily avoided it, but he took it with full force, with sad eyes. After you die... I'm going to forget all about you, fall in love with someone else, sane, and I'll actually be happy. Huh? Maybe I'll fall for Yoshinari, or maybe I'll choose Yunagi. That's none of your concern, right? 
I don't think I'd like that. Even if you sacrifice yourself to save me, I could make a stupid mistake and die the next day. What? Wouldn't your death be totally in vain, then? You'd have died like a dog, protecting nothing. There would be no glory, no proof you ever lived. That's correct, but aren't you being a little mean? I'm just talking about theoreticals out loud. If I'm truly special to you, and if you want to risk your life to protect mine, then why don't you rage against death and live life? Why don't you show me that you have the guts to protect me until I die of old age? Then maybe you can actually call yourself a real SP officer. As I finished my furious scolding, Okazaki just blinked with his mouth wide open. I'd kind of lost track on what I was saying halfway through my speech. What I'm trying to say is, I tried to follow up, but I couldn't find words. I didn't want to say something complicated, but I felt frustrated that I couldn't make him see. I started crying. <laughs> Okazuki? <laughs> You've been forcing yourself, haven't you? I knew I'd been rambling, but I was dead serious. It was truly terrible of him to react that way. I, I know that, so... But you're right. Huh? If I die, I won't be able to laugh like this. I won't be able to enjoy your delicious cooking or see you get angry at me. I don't want that. Yeah, absolutely not. Do you really mean that? I mean, I never thought that you'd try to physically coerce me into agreeing. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm really serious here. Sorry, I get it. I'm really sorry for saying those stupid things and hurting you like I did. <laughs> His voice was different than before. It didn't have that note of resignation. His gloomy eyes now had a different light inside them. It's hard for me to let go of my dream, of dying with a purpose. I just want to seize that wish. <laughs> but when I see you trying so hard, I know that I'm just being selfish, and I feel like a complete idiot. If I just wanted to die, then I could do it without getting other people involved. But I was obsessed with finding a worthy place to die and making sure my death had significance. I regretted my survival. I can't count the number of regrets I have. I just didn't want to own up to my own worthless life. I wanted to run away. But now, I'm holding on to a wish that's greater than both my death wish and my fear of living a meaningless life. I don't want to be apart from you. I want to be together. That's all. Okazuki. If I say that I won't die, will you let me protect you? If you promise me that you absolutely will not die. To be honest, honey, if he's trying to protect you, he can't promise you that. I'm guessing you should say, if you promise me you won't die on purpose. No matter what danger I'm in, you find a way for the both of us to survive. Don't give in to an easy death. Please promise that you'll live for my sake. If you can, then I'll make you a promise. No matter what happens, I won't run away. I'll fight until the end to reach my goals. Okay. Hey, can I hold your hand? Sure. It was the hand that I brushed aside earlier, the pinky that I'd made a promise on. He tightly held my hand, and I felt all of his warmth through it. Huh. I wouldn't be able to hold your hand like this anymore, either. Yeah. You're the only one I'd wanted to be holding hands with like this. Lady... I want you and no one else. I don't think there's anyone else who can try as hard to persuade you as I can. Heh. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. His hand was colder than usual. I'd always thought he was strong, but Okazuki was afraid too. He knew about the fear of loss. He was afraid of living an empty life. He hadn't always been a strong person. He was terrified the way I was after I was collared, and the way everyone in Shinjuku was. We were all battling against our fears. If you're ever afraid to live again, 
I held his large palm tightly. I'll hold your hand as long as you need, the same way you gave me your hand. Thanks. I'm glad I finally got to see you laugh again. When I saw him smiling happily, I finally returned it with a heartfelt smile of my own. Assassination attempt has been added to materials. How much time did we spend like that? Quietly holding hands, sometimes bashfully making eye contact and laughing. I I'm kind of nervous now. I suddenly grew self-conscious of the fact that we were alone together, and that I'd made a big display of my feelings for him. I don't know why, but that second sentence is really weird. The B we're not in a relationship or anything. I think it's supposed to be but. I'm, it's my guess. I'm just going to change it to that. Anyway, I mean, we both confessed how we feel, but we're not in a relationship or anything. Lady. Y yes? I answered more loudly than I intended when he suddenly called my name. Okazuki's eyes widened slightly, and then he continued with a smile. Since we're here, why don't we make this a real Christmas celebration? Eh? Oh, uh, okay. It had been far from my mind, but there was actually a lot of food here. I didn't want to let Yoshinari's concern go to waste, and talking while we ate might help relieve some of the awkward tension. We took food out of the bags, heated it, and then set it on plates. When we finally sat down to eat, I felt a whole lot more calm. Delicious. Convenience store food is actually pretty good. It's better than it used to be, and it's way better than junk food. It's kind of depressing when it tastes better than my own cooking, though. <laughs> that would never happen. Your cooking is way better. R really? I felt my cheeks grow warm, and I placed a hand on my chest. And by the way, about the collar. E yes I swallowed a mouthful of cake without chewing, surprised by the sudden change of topic. Right, the collar. Today, I had originally gone to the office to ask for Sasazuka's help. Now that we'd gotten past our differences, it wasn't the time to be sitting idle. Are you really going through with what you asked? Yeah. What other choice do we have now? <clears throat> It'll be okay. The voice from the caller personally told me to reach them. I know, but... Okazuki, we just promised. <sighs> if I don't make a move now, then I'd just be running away. That would break my promise, wouldn't it? That's not fair. Okazuki pouted and his lips twisted into a frown. His eyes were sad, and I could tell that he was worried. Let's go back once we finish the cake. I think Yanagi's team is still waiting for us. I don't wanna. Excuse me? I wanna stay with you a little longer. Okazuki's hand enveloped mine again. He was as firm as ever, and he trembled a little. He's so... But I understood how he felt. If something happened while examining the collar. I wasn't backpedaling, but I also couldn't deny the risk. So I also wanted to treasure the time that we had together. Then I'll text Junagi to let him know first. They don't exactly keep regular business hours, so I think it should be fine. I took my phone out, but I paused and I was about to start typing. Okazuki had snuggled up against me, his head resting on my shoulder. Uh, Okazuki? Huh? Uh, um, you're a little close. Am I? I think this is normal. Actually, I want to get even closer. Even closer? Uh, well, we're lovers now, aren't we? Uh, what? When did that happen? Huh? I said that I like you. And you said that you like me back, right? I did, but... So what's the problem? What's the problem? There are a lot of problems. I had said all those things, but I disagreed now because I wasn't expecting this at this moment. So... When he said he liked me, he meant it in that way? I had taken it platonically, so I was kind of shocked that he suddenly closed the distance. Besides... 
Did Okazuki really mean that he actually likes like me? Some part of me couldn't believe what he said. I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!